Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and this is number 24 in my series of the powerful tools of Affinity Photo. Uh, there's a link in the description of the whole series, so you can check that out if you missed any of them. This time I'm going to be talking about clipping masks, and sometimes people have trouble with them when they're trying to do it on the layers themselves, so I'll show you an easy way. So before I start, please click that like and subscribe button. It only takes a second. It's right below the video. And I really do appreciate it because it helps my channel. So let's get started. We're going to start with a shape. So I'm going to hold down the shape thing and go to a segment tool. And we're going to just pull the segment tool out. Like something like that. Like all shapes, they have different types of things you could do with them. So for example, here it says lower line instead of 25%. I'm going to bring that down like maybe there. And then the upper line, I'm going to cut maybe there. So I'm kind of trying to get a, a vase effect to it. And I might even go larger, like something like that. And I think that works out pretty good. Because it's a shape, I can't go to the node tool and change anything on it. So what I'd have to do is go back to the selection tool and hit convert to curves. And once you convert it to curves, it no longer says shape here. It's a curve. And that means you can use the node tool. So I'm going to grab the node tool and I'm going to pull down maybe like that, something like that. And I'm going to pull down here on the bottom. And I think that's pretty good. So now we'll go to the fill tool. And on the fill tool, I want to give it a gradient. And what I'll try to do is go maybe from white to some kind of a blue. And let's try something maybe like that. And I don't want it to be linear. I want it to be radial. And so now with the tool right here I can move this around and I kind of want it somewhere in this area I can go in or out like that I go a little bit maybe darker like that just something like that and maybe let's see I think that's okay I think that's okay like that maybe a little bit more out and I'd like it to be a little lighter on the top than the bottom so how about like that okay that's not bad now let's talk about clipping masks the way a clipping mask works well let's first select a pixel layer so here's a pixel layer I'm adding a pixel layer in and a pixel layer goes on top right now of the layer that was before so if I took a paintbrush and I'm going to click my paintbrush tool and on my paintbrush instead of regular basic brushes I am going to go to sprays and splatters which I think is a standard brush you can pick any brush you want and let's go with that one maybe and I'll make my brush size bigger Oops. and I will make my brush size well that's not bad let's maybe a little smaller and I think I want it to be in the yellow family. So let's click here. And somewhere in the yellow or gold. Something like that. And if I went across here like this. And like that. And like that. What you end up getting. Let me see if I can make this out of my way here. What you end up getting is this all on the outside. Well we don't want that right now. So what you can do is you can go, and I'm going to show you another easier way. Some people have trouble with this, but it only takes a little getting used to. You go down to the line right below, and you go a little bit to the right until you see that bar on the bottom indented, and you let go. And what that does is your clipping now is inside that vase. It's nowhere outside the vase. Even though the paint is outside, you can't see it. Before we do that, I'm going to delete that and show you a different way of doing it. Instead of creating the new layer right away, what I'm going to do is first 
click this button right up on top that says insert inside the selection and this is the selection that we have the layer that's selected so if I click that once and then click a layer it's automatically inside so now if I paint again I don't have to do anything it's inside already so that's kind of an easy trick so I want to do that and then I'm going to now that we have this layer here selected inside if I add a new layer it goes on top of this one which is also clipped inside so I'm going to add another layer and what I'll do is I think I will give it almost the same color that we have now and you might not even notice it when I first do it but I want to do this for a reason no you do it's not bad so the reason I do this is I want to give it an effect an effect would be 3d and if you give it a 3d that's way too much I just want to have a little bit of a texture to it like the glass is a little bit bumpier so let's say 1.1 pixel and I could copy and paste it but I'm just going to do it by hand here I'm going to give that the same 3d or close to it and I'm working by the way in 300 uh, dpi and I believe so you may have to judge your own I think the document let me look at my document size uh, is 4 inch by 5 inch at 300 remember we still want to be inside this clipping mask so now on that that one on there the one we just did select that and put another layer I'm adding another layer there and now in black I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard because now these become black and white here and I'm going to hit X to go to the black and instead of these texture brushes I'm going back to the basic brush basic right here and a soft brush so let's try something like this and maybe even a little bigger and I'm going to paint in black right on the edges I'm just gonna go right down the line like that and, and like that and maybe across the bottom and then I will take that and change the blend mode to a, either a soft light or an overlay. And I think I'm going to go with an overlay because then it's a little darker and then I can tone it down if I want to. So that kind of gives you that little bit of a shadow there. Okay, now I didn't put the inside. So what I'll do now is I close the group here and I'm going to add an ellipse to this group. I have nothing selected. I'm just going to create an ellipse right here. And the ellipse is on top, but we really want that to be under everything. And let's get a close-up. And we want that ellipse. Let's give it a color again, gradient. And I think we want, again, that blue that we had before. Something like that. And this time I'm going to keep it as a linear gradient and I'm just going to maybe do something like that. Oops, wrong way. Let's go down instead. Like that. And this is not matching up exactly. And I should have snapping on and it didn't snap for some reason. So let's see why. And so what I could do is actually I can convert it to curves and go to the node tool and just pull these nodes down like that so that they snap in and I think I also wanted to have an outline so I'm going to go to the effects here go to uh, where am I go to outline on outline I think I want inside not outside and maybe almost a grayish in that blue family but more in the gray and we'll go like this just a touch maybe like that and that looks kind of like what we need it to be I think actually more gray something like that and it doesn't look very good there so what I'll do is I'll use my arrow key to move it a little bit down and over so you see most of that 
on the outside right here. And we'll see if we can get the nodes to go up a little here. Let's take snapping off in this case. Let's go like something like that. And this node maybe a little bit. And this middle one, we could pull it up a little bit like that. And like that. Now you really should spend a lot more time. I always tell you this because I'm trying to do a quick video. And unfortunately, when you do a quick video, it doesn't, it doesn't come out the way I'd want to. I would never like to do something like this for a client really quick like that. But it's close enough for what we need right now. So let's go back here. So now let's make a background. Let's do a rectangle tool. And I think this is going to be way too dark. Let's see. We'll see when we're ready, when we're done. And we'll go there instead of that dark color. Let's go a little bit lighter. Um, how about something maybe like that? That's, that looks pretty good. And then we will put that on the bottom. And then we'll do a live filter. Let's try halftone. And instead of monochrome, I'm going to do color and round. I don't know. I'm just playing right now. This could be really ugly when we're done, so bear with me. <laughs> and let's, oh, that's really pretty bright. Maybe we should do monochrome. Hold on. Let's do monochrome. Let's, yeah, let's try monochrome, something like this, and then we'll change the color of that later. And we'll leave it at that. I think I would like the vase in the middle more. Let's put it in the center of the page. There we go. Okay, so now let's rasterize. So now we have these dots and they're rasterized on the back. So now let's take that and let's do the uh, rectangular marquee tool and let's select the top half only not top half the top third let's say about right there looks okay to me maybe there that looks good and we're going to do control or command j which gives me another piece on the bottom right in front and then i will go to the live tool and if i could find a perspective and here we go. I'm just going to pull this way out like that. And I'm going to pull this way out like that. And I think that kind of works. And now I'm going to take both of these. This plus this. Group it. And then rasterize it. So now it's just a one big pixel. And now what we'll do maybe is do a gradient overlay, something like that on top of that. And let's go to our gradient tool. First, we're going to make it an overlay. Well, not overlay, we'll just give it a, a lighter color. Let's see what we want. I think I'm just going to hit lighter mode, just like that. Okay, now on top of that, what I'll do now is once again, I'm going to paint, but this time in black with a soft brush. Let's add a new layer on top of that, and I'm going to touch once, whoops, deselect first. I'm going to touch once, hold shift, and touch again. And that kind of gives me the shadow, and I could change that to a soft light or I could change it to different blend mode multiply I think multiply is pretty good and I think I want it wider so let's do something like that after you get it to where you think you want it we will now blur it so we'll go to effects blur and Gaussian blur And let's just pull it out so the blur stays there. We should put a shadow also underneath the vase. So 
Let's make a pixel layer under the vase, which is right there. And with that, we're going to paint again in black. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll just do an ellipse and make the ellipse black. And we'll just go like this. Something to that effect. And go a little bit out more. I think I want the ellipse to be a little more in the blue family, not black. So let's go back to the blue family. Something of this sort, maybe like that. And then we will go filter, Gaussian blur, and we'll just blur it out, something to that effect. And I think it needs to be much bigger than that. And we can turn the opacity down just like that. Duplicate it again, Control or Command J. And then we can make it a little bit smaller so it's darker on the inside. And we raise that opacity up. And that looks okay too. So I'm not sure I'm happy with this. If, uh, if I was, I'd go like so much further, but it is a pretty <laughs> ugly background. But you did get a lot of techniques, and that's really what counts. Um, I would spend so much more time. I would ch probably change the, the dots in the background. I'll try and just do a different kind of a background there. But I just wanted to show you, really my main reason for showing you this was the clipping mask that you, instead of dragging down here and to the right, you could always select up on top right here where it says insert inside the selection. And whatever selection you've selected, if you, if you click that first before doing the next thing, before pasting or before adding a, a layer or anything, it will go inside. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, please click like and subscribe and have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye.